Hi everybody, it's Tammy and welcome back to the Barnacle Breakdown, where we take a piece of Barnacle media and see how it connects and references to the rest of the Bionicle franchise, both before and after release. It's like having a mask of time, or is it? Let's find out as we break down the 2004 smash hit director DVD feature length film, Barnacle 2 Legends of Metru Nui. It's neither been confirmed nor denied if the Miramax logo actually exists within the Barnacle universe. For all we know, it might actually still be sitting at the bottom of the Silver Sea. As with Mask of Light, the movie's opening sequence is set in an Amarja circle. The circle presented here appears to be near the Great Barrier, with some artistic license thrown in. This would make sense as the novelization makes it clear that this opening sequence and narration is to Raghava Karma telling the story of events from a thousand years ago to the Toa Nuva and Matoran. The fallen Toa whom Toraga Vakama refers to in the opening are the Toa Mangai, a team of 11 Toa originating from different lands. Lakam was their leader and, at the beginning of this movie, seemingly the last surviving member. Toa Tuyet and Nadiki were expelled thousands of years ago prior to the story, however the remaining 8 Toa have only been killed in the past 18 months after being deliberately sent by Teradax disguised as Duma on missions away from the city to be murdered. The Dark Hunter Eliminator is responsible for the death of at least two of these Toa and the chronicler at the time, Kodan. The word Mangai means guardian in Matoran, and on Matanui, the Toa Metru would name the Mangai Volcano in memory of their fallen heroes. Originally a Matoran crafter, at this point in the story, Lakan has been a Toa for a little over 7,000 years. Turagaduma had some involvement in his transformation. It is the recent disappearance of his comrades that has prompted Lakan to retrieve six Toa stones from the Great Temple and imbue them with his Toa power. By the way, this is chronologically the earliest event depicted in the movies. The set version of Toa Lakan's Kanoe Hao looks somewhat different to the version that we have been familiar with from previous years. Greg has referred to this as a regional variation. The novelization also describes his mask as being yellow, which would back up his depiction in the movie and would suggest that the set is actually inaccurate in that regard. What do you think? Time for me to get my spray paint out again? 1,001 years from now, during Teradax's reign, this sculpture field will be the site of a conflict between Makuta's forces and the Toa Mari. Look, it's a teeny tiny asshole crab. I want a pet it, I want a pet it, so cute. Whilst Toa Lakan is delivering the Toa Stones, Onua is pondering about Akmu just before Lakan arrives. Oh my god, it's Vizola! When Nua has just received a shipment of dormant Borok, and the vehicle Matau is testing was designed by Nuparu. Matau collision count one. Nuju's telescope indicates scan and lock. Fakama's tool is called a fire staff. They are also welded by Tanok Va. Fakama will carry this throughout his time as a Toa, and it will eventually become his Taraga badge of office. In the novelization of the movie, Vakama tries on the mask to see if it is powered. This ability would later be used by Huki when he finds a Saletu in 2006. Vakama's robotic assistant is called a fire drone. Its CGI model is a tiny Matoran head on a tiny Borok body. I don't know about you, but I can't decide if I want to pet it or step on it. Toa Nadiki's portrayal of his teammates, a mutation into a four-legged being, are chronicled in the short story Birth of a Dark Hunter from the Barnacle Encyclopedia 1st edition and a flashback in Legacy of Evil. In the novel, Lakan actually shouts his warning to Vakama as he has been dragged away, so perhaps Vakama isn't purely hallucinating. Vakama appears to have returned Lakan's great swords to his forge. As a Turaga, Lakan would have a shield that appears to be a shrunk version of these? If they are the same tool, it's not clear how he reacquired it. Lakan's Toa tools are in fact quite an accurate reflection of his character and story, as he mainly uses them not for offence, but for protection and evasion, putting the mission and the lives of those he is protecting above vanquishing a foe. At this point in time, Duma, the real Duma, has been Turaga of Metru Nui for about 15,000 years. He was himself previously a Toa of Fire and leader of his own Toa team. I like that Lakan was able to essentially leave a voicemail at the Toa Suva. Yes, Nakama puts her Toa Stone into the Co-Metru symbol, but the Suva is only activating the Toa energy to transform them into Toa and unlock their existing elemental powers, so it doesn't really matter, though I suppose it's always possible that Nakama gained the ability to generate chilled water. A slight digression, but I like to think that Lakan transformed into a Turaga during this moment, and that it gave him some comfort while in prison to know that his mission to create a new team of Toa had succeeded. Apparently, the much more boring canon answer is that he just decided to become a Turaga, which, dude, they could have, like, really used your help. The newly transformed Toa Metru collect their tools from the Toa Suva Shrine. They also acquire elemental Toa discs bearing their likenesses and names. The Suva also contains an additional disc bearing Nuri's likeness as part of a plan by the Order of Matanui to deceive Teradax. It's complicated. Matau Collision Count 2! Following their transformation, Teradax ensures that the Great Temple is closed to the public and guarded by Vaki, forcing the Toa to sneak in on return visits. The phrase Fire Spitter is an insult borrowed from the dialect spoken by Lay Matoran. This was called Tree Speak in previous years, but was confirmed in 2006 to be originally known as Shoot Speak on Metru Nui. Like Lewa in Mask of Light, Matau is the only Lay character to speak in the movie, aside from Kongu's cameo, and therefore the only character to use it regularly in Legends of Metru Nui. This monument that Nakama reads from appears to be the same device Nakama retrieved the Toa Stones from. 
This montage seems like a good point to talk about the timeline of this movie. And oh my god, the timeline of this movie! It's not actually as complicated as it seems. Aside from being a prequel to the 2001-3 story, it does at least tell its story in chronological order, and just has lots of other stories that slot into it at various points. The first half of the 2004 story takes place during this montage, including the novels Mystery of Metru Nui, Trial by Fire, and comics 16, 17, and 18. During these stories, the Toa Metru find the Matoran who know the locations of the Great Discs, Matau Collision Count 3, and defeat the King Root of the Morbuzak. The Morbuzak was engineered by Pterodax to herd the Matoran population into a concentrated area and them easier to subdue. Following this, during the novel The Darkness Below, the Toa are en route to the Colosseum when they are diverted to the Onumetru tunnels and encounter the shape-shifting Rahi Kraka. The cumulative drain of their elemental abilities during these battles leaves them unable to use their powers for most of the movie. Pterodax slash Doom's transmission is made a lot more authoritarian in the novel by the following detail. Those who attempted to approach the screen, or turn away from it, were stopped by Vaki squads. Nivok is believed to be the name of this individual member of an otherwise unnamed flying Rahi species. In the novelization, the Toa have interrupted an Akalini disc tossing tournament, which is likely the great contest referred to by the false Doomer back in Fakam's workshop. This is the first appearance of Lei and Komatoran in the films, as they did not appear in Mask of Light. Despite all Matoran on Metru Nui having a triangular torso design, only Vakama and his team have this in the movie. Presumably this was allowed the production team to reuse the existing Matoran models from Mask of Light. Vakama and co also seem to be the only Matoran in the city who wear the great versions of the Huna, Rao, Mahiki, Matatu, Kamau, and Ruru. Taragaduma's movie likeness would appear alongside the Colosseum four years later, in the final comic of 2008, when Pterodax reveals that he has taken control of something much bigger. The only Vaki that appear in this movie are the Pometru Zadak and the Onumetru Rorzak. They both carry staffs of Eurasia, normally carried by the Laymetru Vorzak. My rationalisation for this is that they were reconfigured to aid in Pterodax's plan to subdue and wipe the memories of the Matoran. Vakama uses a series of weakened and reconstituted random Kanoka discs to destabilise the base of the statue. Matau Collision Count 4! The Dark Hunters Nadiki, Cracker, and Eliminator have essentially been hired by Pterodax from the Shattered One. Cracker lost the use of one of his eyes in a previous job during an altercation with Makuta Gorast. Whilst Cracker is a complete idiot, he is also very loyal to the Dark Hunters, which is why he is often paired by the Shadow One with Nadiki, who has a history of disloyalty. Kongi wears a Kanoe Ruru in this film rather than his more familiar Miru. I was very disappointed. The future Toranika is prepared to risk exploding the entire system to save his own life. Make of that what you will. We never find out if this container breached the outer chute and fell onto someone's head. Matt, our collision count five! This poster of Taragaduma is captioned with Play Well, a phrase well known to LEGO fans. The fact that the great discs can be combined appears to be a revelation to Vakama, despite this being a very common technique to create new powers for masks and discs. To be fair, he may have considered the six discs powerful enough individually, let alone combined. Comics 19, 20, and 21 take place at some point while Vakama, Nakama, and Matau are on the run, but it's difficult to slot them neatly into the events of the movie. In comic 19, the three Toa are pursued by Vaki to lay Metru. Nakama is briefly indoctrinated by the Vaki Bordak, Vakama discovers the jetpack function of his disc launcher, which seems to be convenient forgotten about in the film, and they stow away upon an airship. Meanwhile, Onowa, Wenowa, and Nuju make a futile attempt to escape from underground while being escorted to their containment cell. Comic 20 is, uniquely, narrated from Nadiki's point of view. The Toa are ambushed on the airship and escape. That's about it. Comic 21 is arguably the comic with the most consequence from that year, as it fully introduces the Tatarak as a result of the events of the novel The Darkness Below. Vakama, Nakama, and Matau subdue it, Vakama has a premonition of the Toa Hordika, and the three Toa continue on their way. The Tatarak would return the following year in the novel Challenge of the Hordika. It's not clear if the presence of Matoran pods in this Pometru assemblers village is supposed to indicate that the local Matoran population have already been pacified or not by the Vaki. The deflection ability of Nakama's hydro blades is pretty cool, just saying. This doorway in Pometru is shaped like the Kanoe Kukan. Perhaps it was built a long time ago when the Makuta were still well regarded by the Matoran. Between escaping their cell and reaching this tunnel, the other three Toa and Taragalakan have hitched a ride with a Troller Rahi. We have no artwork for the Troller Rahi. TTV, when is the canon contest for the Troller Rahi? Years later, a fan suggested to Greg Farshi that one of the very similar looking promotional sets be canonised as the set version of Taragala Khan, and Greg has made this canon. The comatose Taraka Duma is confirmed in the novelization to not be wearing his Kanoe Kuril, as Pterodax is using it. He is depicted with it in the film to make it clear who the character is, and because the production team had an aversion to showing the exposed character faces. Duma and his pod will remain here until it conveniently malfunctions, and he awakens at some point during the Viserac storyline. His next chronological appearances are the short story The Dweller Report and the epilogue of the novel Time Trap. Also, Matau is jumping up and down in the background to see what's inside the pod. Like an eight-year-old.
There was a scene cut during production of a swarm of Lorak Rahi attacking the Toa and snatching Taraga Khan. This is shown in the novel, and the Toa are actually forced to use some of their regenerated elemental abilities. This is a mirror of sorts that Makuta uses to talk to himself. It is later implied in Web of the Visorak that this device was also a countdown to Pterodax's plan. This makes some sense, as Matanu is actually falling comatose to a virus that was inflicted upon him by the Makuta 300 years ago. Also in the novel, once they uncover Pterodax's deception, Taraga Likan prompts the Tarmetru to recall the Legends of Eternal Shadow, described as when the light of the Great Spirit will be lost. It is unclear if the prophecies of the Tarmata are related to this. Matal's proposition is non-canon, and no, this does not mean Matal was quote-unquote cop-blocked by Greg. No one is entitled to anyone else's booty. Respect consent, y'all. It's not clear why the Valky transport just descends from the air. Up until this point, the Matoran have had a fearful respect for the Makuta ever since the Archives massacre about 80,000 years ago. Look it up, it's grim. This moment would finally be shown from Matanui's perspective in the Matanui saga in 2010. This event will be referred to during the Matoran universe as the Great Cataclysm. The earthquakes are caused by Matanui crashing into Aqua Magna. Far away on the south continent, a region by the name of Voyanui will be launched upwards, breaking through the chest of the robot and resting on the surface of Aqua Magna. Water from the ocean moon will spill in through the hole, past the southern continent, and into Cardanui, where it will combine with the energies of the Kodrex to create the Swamp of Secrets. The Avmatoran settlements adjacent to Cardanui will also plummet from the dome from the impact, landing on stalactites. It will require the return of Voyanui to the southern continent and the power of the staff of Artaka to repair the damage approximately 1,001 years later to allow the Great Spirit Robot to reawaken. Metru Nui is located within the head of the Great Spirit Robot, and the island that will later be named Mata Nui covers the robot's massive face. Or at least it will do shortly when the island is actually created. The Kanoe Ruru's X-ray ability risks making the Akaku redundant. Supposedly the Akaku's X-ray ability is much more powerful. I noted in the Mask of Light breakdown that the first film bumped the Matoran population from dozens to hundreds. In Legends of Metru Nui, where Nua notes that there are thousands of Matoran pods, and Greg has confirmed that this is in fact the new, new canon. The massive power surge this causes will destroy most of the Vaki connected to the grid at the time, however those that survive are changed in interesting ways, as seen in the 2005 novels. In the real world, these Matoran pods will be created by combining two Metru canister lids together, one of the six pods the Toa Metru initially take with them contains the Pomator and Akmu, and it may even be this one. The novel Voyage of Fear actually recalls, from Akmau's perspective, the moment he is sedated in the Colosseum. Ironically, one of the last thoughts he has is why the Toa aren't there to rescue him. He will be lost during the events of the novel Voyage of Fear, and eventually be found by Pterodax. By the way, the Rahaga have been lurking in the archives for a while now, and are watching all of this unfold with horror. Since Nadiki, Cracker, and Nivok are absorbed by Pterodax, they will not be revived on the Red Star. The disappearance of two Dark Hunters will arouse the attention of their leader, the Shadowed One, and will ultimately trigger a war between the Dark Hunters and the Brotherhood of Makuta that continues until the events of the 2008 story. It's not quite clear why the Toa were heading to the Great Temple with the Six Matoran. The six great discs have been combined here to create the Disc of Time. The disc has the number 199, indicating that it was made by a Tamatoran, yes, Toa are part of the Matoran species, has the power of time, and is a great disc power strength. It was released as a collectible in special Vaki sets in 2004. From it, Vakama carves the mask of time, the Kanoe Vahi. While this movie shows its creation, behind the scenes this mask dates back to Barnacle's earliest development. It was originally created, in orange, as a promotional item for the Legend of Mata Nui video game in 2001. When that game was cancelled, it was distributed via other promotions. It was finally introduced into the story in 2003 during the Baroque Kalark, set a thousand years after this movie, more or less. It was originally referred to as a Great Mask of Time, however in later years it would be retconned into the newly created Legendary Mask power level, along with the Mask of Life and the Mask of Creation. In its debut, the Kanoe Vahi is depicted as gold in colour. After losing it during this fight, Vakama will later retrieve it from the Silver Sea in the novel Time Trap, where due to damage it is leaking time energy and has rusted into orange. One of the antagonists from Time Trap, the Dark Hunter Voparak, will finally steal it during the 2008 story, and it currently remains in his possession on Sferis Magna. The 2008 podcast serial Dark Mirror introduced the Toa Empire alternative universe. In that universe, the Great Discs were retained by Artaka, and he created the Vahi. In Barnacle G2, the Vahi shape appears in the background of several pieces of 2015 media, and explicitly in one of the graphic novels. G2 also has a Mask of Time, although it is only shown to cover the upper half of the face, implying that the two incarnations are somehow connected. The Great Barrier is the inner layer of the Great Spirit Robot's head casing. There used to be more routes out of it to other islands, but Pterodax ordered most of them closed. While not named outright, this film makes the first reference to there being other Makuta. 
This is the same form Pterodax was seen in in Mask of Light, with the addition of Nivork's wings. He will lose these to the Shadow One during novel Time Trap, and apparently didn't bother to grow anymore. This is the third time we've seen someone place a Kanoe on top of the one they're already wearing. The first was Takua with the Mask of Light, and the second was Pterodax with Duma's Mask. Tahu was explicitly depicted in the comics switching to the Vahi from his Halnuva. This may be because he had a Suva to switch with, or more likely it's just artistic license. Pterodax's attack technique is called a Shadow Hand, and will later be seen wielded by the other Makuta in Kardanui. Lakan is revived as a Taraga with a replacement mask on the Red Star, but due to its having malfunctioned, is trapped there along with a large number of other revived beings. Combining elemental powers to form a protodermic cage would later be used by the Tawamata to trap the Barag. It is also the only use of the Tawametru's elemental powers in the movie, for reasons mentioned earlier. Pterodax's setbacks concerning the Matoran and the Vahi will result in a brief rebellion by Makuta Ikarax, although the Brotherhood's leader will quickly put an end to this. The novel Voyage of Fear is set soon after the main events of this movie, and in it the Toametru christen this transport the Lakan. It would later be abandoned on Matanui and eventually used to help build villages on the island. Lakan's memory would also live on in the Tarkoro legend of Lee the Surfer. Between this shot of the Great Barrier and the scene on the Matanui beach, the novels Voyage of Fear, Maze of Shadows, and the entirety of the 2005 story have taken place. Fukama has only recently rejoined his teammates after reclaiming the Kanoe Vahi and making a deal with Makuta for peace for one year. While the Toa Mata's canisters have already been launched and have landed in the Aqua Magna Ocean, the Toa Metru have already siphoned off some of their Toa power into Toa Stones that are hidden around the island. It will be 999 years before they are found by Takua and used to activate a failsafe mechanism that summons the Toa Mata's canisters to the island, and the events of the 2001 story begin. According to BSO-1, the beach this final scene takes place on is Naho Bay, the soon-to-be location of Garkoro, although I cannot find a source for this. The bay is named after Toa Naho, another deceased Toa Mangai. All of the Matoran capsules have text that reads Capsu Car. It's probably just a typo of capsule and they're being sent to Canada. Or oh, I'm just kidding. The film's depiction of the Matoran emerging from their spheres does not reflect the fact that they have been shrunk. I don't know about you, but I was really looking forward to seeing Dinky Muktoran in movie form. It's probably a production limitation. In universe, it's possible that they've reduced in size sometime after their reawakening. Canonically, the Matorans still have silver paint on their masks that denotes them as powerless. However, these will fade over years of exposure to the sun on Matanui. Takua's colour scheme here is red and blue, although at this point his secondary colour should be yellow. There appears to be a rendering error in the top right of Jala's mask, exposing part of his head. This is the only noble Kanoe Howl seen in the franchise to date. No in-universe explanation is given as to why Lakan's noble Howl spontaneously transforms to resemble a great version. This mask would later be taken by Kazani, reclaimed by the Toa Nuva, and returned to Jala. It remains in the possession of the now Toa Maria Fire. As a Toa Anika, Jala would later see a vision of Lakan as he descended the 777 steps on Voya Nui. The end of the initial credit sequence reuses two clips from Mask of Light, featuring the Hal doorway in Makuta's lair and Taraga Vakama. The Matoran text at the end of the credits reads Best Matoran, Matoran Scouts, Assistant to Mr. Makuta, Set Doctor, Nivork Handler, Gaffer, Vaki Transport Captain, Security for Metru Nui, Master Builders, Stunt Riders, Stunt Double for Matau, and Kick and Arlo Wranglers. And that, my friends, is the Barnacle Breakdown for Legends of Metro Nui. I really hope you enjoyed it. Thanks so much to the artists who let me use their material in this video. Links for all of them will be found in the description. Thank you so much as well for watching and for waiting, and I'll see you soon for another video. Bye!